Okay, I think we are good to go. What is up, Caitlin? So not a whole lot. My name is Caitlin. I am a military spouse who's currently here in Garmish with my husband. I am a mill spouse of about eight years now. We are in a very, very tiny base. And of course, in Germany, as you and many of your guests have experienced, finding jobs is super hard. So I'm currently unemployed. Yes. Just doing the um, avid volunteer life around here. Okay. And okay. trying to help out where I can. Okay, nice. We're going to focus our time today talking about Garmish. However, that's not how your story started, right? Correct. <laughs> so kind of walk me through where you guys were originally stationed and then how that got switched at the last moment and all that type of stuff. So my husband's original orders were for Rhine Ordnance Barracks, which is in the K-Town Ramstein area. And about three weeks before we landed on the ground, my husband went into work, just signed out on leave and just by chance checked his email one last time. And called me i was like um i got some bad news we're we're not going there anymore we're going somewhere else <laughs> did you guys know anything about garmish at that point in time other than googling a few pictures just from other friends who have been stationed in germany talking about coming down to vacation down here absolutely nothing wow and three three weeks before you're supposed to like take off you learning about a completely different place that you guys have to go to all right so for sure what i want to cover like which i told you on the phone yesterday was the three like top things that people worry about before they get over overseas you know so it's transportation it's communication and it's lodging all right so with those things in mind, let's talk about each one, but just kind of <laughs> with your with your situation in mind, you know what I mean? Because I'm sure you probably already had ideas of how you're gonna get around and where you're gonna stay and all that and, and all that stuff for K-Town. But tell me about the transition over to Garmish and then what you guys had to do to take care of those three things. So in some ways, moving to Garmish instead of the K-Town area made our lives a lot easier. Okay. Housing here. We have a surplus of housing because there are not as many active duty families on this base as there used to be. So the plane to pillow concept that we see a lot over here in Europe is very much a thing here. We uh -huh. were picked up by our sponsor after taking a bus from Ramstein to Grafenbeer and immediately dropped into our apartment. We had loaner furniture, like the lending basket from ACS with some dishes and pots and pans and that kind of thing. So it was, a very different experience than someone who is staying in the K-Town area who may go into a TLF. And did you get to see that home before you guys moved into the apartment? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we did not get a video walkthrough. We did not get options or anything. Our sponsor went through housing and housing said, we have a house that will be here when they get here. <laughs> Do most people get to see their places before they get to Garmish, that they know they're going to Garmish? Not to my knowledge. From my understanding, the sponsor goes in and signs for it just so they have keys when they walk in with the family. So unless the sponsor comes through and gives them a video, which I would say at max is probably a week before they land on the ground, they're not seeing what they're walking into. Wow. I know housing is working on putting up some floor plans and whatnot on a website. I don't know which exact website they're working on doing that for, but they're trying to get a little more information out there. But I know a lot of the other bases, you have options of different neighborhoods and stuff. We have one neighborhood here. Everyone lives on the same street. Right. That, that are on base, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's only about, uh, to my knowledge, a little over a thousand i want to think i want to say do you know people americans that that are stationed in garmish on the on that base permanent party active duty members i want to say is less than 200 so when you add in their families 800 mm -hmm. to a thousand depending on spouses children that kind of thing okay so you've got a place you're <laughs> you really don't have a choice but you're in a, you're in an apartment or do you like the apartment? What What's your first impressions? I was very surprised by it in comparison to any on-base housing that I had seen stateside. It's just my husband and myself. We don't have any kids and our two dogs. So generally speaking, when we get offered base housing, it's super tiny, super old and outdated. Not that the homes in Germany don't seem outdated to most Americans because they do. That's just in German style. They don't feel the need to update houses to make them look pretty every 10 to 15 years. But space wise and storage wise, I was thoroughly impressed with what we were given. I just realized you guys had two dogs as well. So let me know if I'm correct. Flew in the Ramstein with the rotator. You got 
on the bus to Graf, then your sponsor picked you up from Graf to drive you to Garmisch. And right. is that a normal thing that they do um, when you're flying in with the rotator? Do they usually... Unless your sponsor goes out of their way to drive all the way to Ramstein to pick you up from that point, the standard process is the bus to Graf, which was about a six hour ride for us. Yeah a very short sleep in the hotel before we made our way down here yeah that first day is uh I'm, uh, there's no sugar coating it sucks <laughs> it was a very long 48 hours of travel and chaos and right yes okay so you got your you're in garmish you're in your apartment which is perfectly adequate let's just say that right and then let's talk about now communication and transportation around that area so communication we do have a few options as most on base housing or all in germany we have the tks internet tower built in that we can call and activate we chose to go through telecom for both of our internet and our cell phone service which was very easy to set up um, we did that just a couple days after we arrived once we set up our bank account through service credit union so we had that iban which is used for all the billing and did you use um, one of the banks on base service credit union or community bank okay yeah those are the only two um, on-base banks we have down here. I know some of the bigger bases have like a Navy Fed or... Yeah, I don't think they have a Navy Fed at any of the bases around here. They All of them have Service Credit Union and Community Bank, but a lot of people now are starting to use um, WISE and uh, N26 to save themselves on the conversion fees or the conversion rate. I attempted N26 and I did not have great success as they wanted some sort of like permit showing that we were living in Germany. Germany, like a housing permit and since we live on base we don't have such a thing okay okay so but i'm don't... assuming people who are living on the economy wouldn't have that issue yeah they I'm looking for... paying that permit i'm looking more into that because i do want to promote that if, if, if i can save people money you know um oh, but absolutely. I am, i'm finding that both wise and n26 are just a little little difficult to like get initially started you know what i mean yeah <laughs> so i'm trying to make sure i can figure that out so i can make it as easy as possible for people to get on board but okay so you got banking though you got your house and you went through you got telecom through tks is that correct no right. we don't use tks at all Ah, okay. um, here in the valley in the winter time or when there's big storms we can tend to lose tks service for extended periods of time mm -hmm. so we opted against using tks completely we were t-mobile users in the states and our cell phone bill was cut almost in half oh, okay by using telecom nice and our internet is about the same price as you would expect in the states so in reference to budgeting and bills it was a benefit for us okay well that works out perfect then okay cool so communication is good to go data phone internet all that stuff transportation did you guys use a rental car are you still waiting for a car what, what are you doing for transportation so we did not rent a car when we got here it was still lovely and warm not freezing and snowy like it is right now so i could walk to a lot of places and we also got the deutschland pass through Dutch Bahn, um, which covered the all the local buses and the regional trains mm -hmm. that would take us up to Munich and things like that, which I used to go out and explore town while my husband was at work, go shop at local grocery stores, which was a saving grace because my bill at the commissary added up very quickly when I tried to shop there. <laughs> Right, right. Very limited resources um, over there on Garmisch. So this is this is good to to learn about some new options out there. <laughs> yes, you know? the buses are very easy to navigate. Most of Europe uses this or Germany uses the same app, so you can plug in what bus stop you want to be picked up from and you can see all the bus stops throughout town and plug in the name of where you want to go. I know I've taken the bus to Aldi, Etika and Lidl, along with like house where kind of stores we do have a similar to like a home depot or lowe's like do-it-yourself store and we also have a couple pet stores in town okay good 
So those are all accessible by bus. And it was very easy. We have a bus stop literally at the gate, the base where everyone lives. And it comes once an hour to pick up. And which app were you using? You said everyone uses the same app. It's the, the Dutch Bond app. Oh, the DB Navigator app. Yes. That's what I thought. Okay, I use that for trains a lot, but I don't I don't take the bus too often. So I didn't know if that was the same one that you're using. Yep, you can use that one for buses as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I know a lot of times on that app, if you're trying to go on the train and some for some reason the train is not working or delayed or whatever, they'll give you a bus option. You know what I mean? So I, yeah, okay. I want to make sure that I wasn't uh, missing out on any other app that I didn't know about. No, uh, it's that one. It's very convenient, especially if you're trying to go a little further out of town. We ventured out to a few nearby towns before our car showed up using the bus and train combo as well. And it'll let you plan the whole trip all in one. And do most um, incoming families use that bus right there outside the gate if they need to get around, if they don't have a car or something? A lot of families will take the bus until they get a car or some people elect to not get a car at all while they're here. So they use the bus quite a bit or a lot of families also just depend on their sponsor if they need something off base to take them where they need to go until their car arrives. And since we're talking about transportation, I'm just curious, you said you've been boring a little bit while your husband's been at work. Where where have you been so far? Um, I have kind of ventured all over town. So we, starting local first? Yeah, I did a lot of just little, I would pick a random bus stop and just wander a six to eight block radius around it wander in the stores, see what there is to see. And once our household goods were delivered and I kind of knew what we needed, I already had that baseline to know where I wanted to go to find stuff. It worked out to my benefit and it killed my free time. Yeah, no, no, that's a great idea. That I, I always encourage people to start local, you know, like learn about home base first. You got to know where all those spots are. You know what I mean? When you move from one place to another, you got to find a new hairdresser, a new, you know, car mechanic, a new X, Y, and Z, you know what I mean? So that's good that you did that. And you got, you said that you've been to Munich, uh, any other interesting cities you've been to? We went to Mittenwald, I think is one of our favorite cities. And it's only about a 30 minute drive from us. I want to say it took us about an hour between the bus and train combo before we had our car. It's just a very cute city. They do a lot of events and whatnot down there. And it's just smaller than Garmisch. Garmisch, everyone makes seem like it is the tiniest town in the world and there's absolutely nothing here but when we showed up we were so surprised at how big it was and we do have quite a bit of stuff like i wasn't expecting us to have a hardware store and little specific stores like that i expected us to have grocery stores and a pharmacy and basics <laughs> yeah yeah and how do you how do you i should have asked, asked you this earlier but how do you actually like it there in garbage now that you've gotten switched over to that area i really enjoy it and my husband does as well we're getting used to the cold because yeah. we came from central west texas at goodfellow air force base where it was still 100 plus degrees every day when we got here so yeah. uh, well now you're the two extremes there you know <laughs> yes we went from one to the other so it's the learning curve we're still shopping for winter gear but we are really enjoying it we've never lived in a an area with this kind of snow and whatnot so we're really taking it in and yeah you're gonna get all four seasons over there sometimes in one day especially over there and in, in garbage with all the mountains and stuff but i mean i that's my favorite area in germany by far and you know i'm, I'm a lake and a mountain guy you know what i mean so obviously you've got that you can throw a rock to a lake over there and the mountains are literally right above you. You know what I mean? So um, yeah, it's gorgeous over there. So transportation's good, communication good, lodging stuff is good. I wanna talk about, I know you don't have any kids, but talk to me about the schooling situation over there. I know it's a little funky. So it is very unique. We do have a DODEA school on base that covers first through eighth grade. Okay. They are combined classrooms. Most of the classrooms actually have two grades in them oh. because we have that small of a student base and then the high school kids have the option of homeschooling attending a german school if they speak the german language or there is an application process to go to a charter type school that the dod pays for the children do have to be accepted to that school and they ride to munich on a bus every day so they have an hour to an hour and a half ride each direction to school every day. Yeah. But I do have a few friends who have high school age kids and they love going to school up there. It's yeah. a drive, but they, the experiences and the people that they get to know and truly being immersed in the culture because they go to school with German and other nationality students. 
Right. It's an experience that most people don't get to have. Yeah, I, I want to go check that school out sometime. I know, I know for a while that they go up there. I've never been to it. I've never seen it. I've, I've heard good things, but I just don't know anything about it. So it'd be interesting to see. It'd be interesting to know how many kids from the American community in Garmisch actually go there. One. And then what it's like to actually go to school at an international school like that before, because I, I literally have no idea how that works. And then have uh, have you made any friends with um, parents that have like smaller kids? We do have a CDC on base. Everyone raves about it. They love all the staff there. And then there is also a big group of parents that have kids that are not school age yet, but they don't put them in the CDC, and they do like daily perk play dates and whatnot on base. So you've got play dates and stuff for the little little kids and then there's a CDC and then starting at you said first grade I believe so I don't believe there's a kindergarten on base because one of my neighbors children go to kindergarten out in town a true german kindergarten right right okay so first through eighth at and is, is that one school or is it more yes it is one building oh okay okay awesome um all right well look we've covered the three main things any other odd things about garmish that we need to know about or that incoming families need to know about i would think the biggest thing is to give people a realistic expectation of how small the base itself is in the sense that there are a lot of benefits and services that you may be used to receiving on a military base that we don't have here. Right. I actually made a list to make sure I don't forget any because a lot of these could be important to people. We do not have a barber shop. We do not have a true defect facility. It's a private dining facility that we have on this base. We do not have a legal office or a pharmacy. We don't have a dry cleaners or an education center. A lot of those things can be attained out in town with the education center, we are supported by some of the bigger bases like Graph and whatnot. RPX size and the limited things that they carry. For instance, RPX does not have any toys. So especially if you were coming in with limited baggage during your PCS, you can't just run to the PX and pick up some toys for your kids to play with until unaccompanied arrives. I would suggest either shipping them to your APO box or finding room in a suitcase for them because Wow, I didn't know that. Okay. Yes. No toys. Even at Christmas time, we didn't get any toys in the PX. Wow. Okay. We do not have any fast food places on this base, including a coffee shop. There's no like uh, Anthony's Pizza or the none no of that. No Subway, no Burger King, none of it. Wow. Okay. Okay. Now, with me saying there is no coffee shop, our chaplain is amazing and he runs what he calls a caffeine attic. It is a coffee shop where he sponsors the it's essentially just like a free coffee shop that you can wander in talk to the chaplain he provides all of his usual services for the base since we have contracted government workers who do the church services on base that is what he does for our base and of course he comes to all of our events and it's just a little different because our chapel is serviced by the the german national people instead of those services being hosted by one of the chaplains. We do not have an arts and crafts facility or any sort of rec facilities on our base like bowling alley or a movie theater or anything like that. We do have some like sports fields, like we have a baseball field and I think a soccer field. We don't have an MWR or a USO here. Is there a gym there? We do have a gym. Okay. It is across the street on Sheridan Caserne though. Got it. So okay. it takes a little bit to get there. You get your warm up in on the way to the gym. There you go. The other three things that we are lacking at this base are regularly supported by other bases, meaning they come down on a scheduled basis to provide services to us. Auto skills for swapping out tires, oil changes, that kind of thing come down three to four times a year. The vet comes down from Vilsic, I believe, oh. every few months. And then medical and dental. Medical, they do biannually or every three months. They'll come down and do a roundup to provide vaccinations and that kind of stuff. Another <laughs> thing, speaking of medical, <laughs> Oh Since yeah. We don't have the clinic. All the families down here are on Tricare Remote. So, we can go through the Tricare process to get referrals to local providers or we can travel up to Honfelds or Grafenvier to see medical providers 
through the military systems that way. Which is a minimum three hours drive. I mean, well, I, mean I think Grafenvir is actually a little longer. It might be three and a half, four hours uh, away. Yes. Owen Fells might be a little closer to you though. Wow, okay. So you probably, you need to probably start looking at what you've already done, um, is start looking at local resources, you know? Yes. When you're in a jam, you know, and you need something immediately. You don't have time to wait for the, you know, biannual, you know, visit, <laughs> whatever it is. Yes. Okay. Uh, the TRICARE remote line that we call, they essentially act as our PCM. They are very good about finding us local providers here in town. My husband had surgery shortly before we arrived over here. He was able to establish a primary care doctor within just a week or two. And then he was referred to physical therapy, which he can also do here in town. I know we have eye doctors in town. There's dentists in town. Like there's a lot more here than most people based on the comments that you see most of the time when you see anything about Garmish. Let me ask another question. Speaking of things you don't have, <laughs> have you come, have you ran into the problem of having a pet like a border for when you want to go on vacation or like a day boarding facility? Yes. Pet boarding here is very difficult. There are not facilities in the area. I believe there might be one, but they book out almost a year in advance. Yeah, we have the same problem over here. The border here in town has repeat clients that come in for the ski season or like the nice warm summer season and they book annually. I don't know how many years in advance they book, but they're very hard to get into. But there are several spouses and some of the staff over at the Edelweiss also will come over and pet sit or babysit for families in their free time out time of outside of their shifts over at the Edelweiss as well. And, and what do you guys use to communicate with the community over there? So there is one community Facebook group. It's called Garmish Community Connection. It is a private group that you have to go in and answer the questions and what not to get into through Facebook. Um, but that is the main spouses page yeah. to get any information. Okay. And speaking of spouses page and stuff, is there a spouses club there? So we do have the Garmish Community Club. It is not a typical spouses club structure. Active duty service members, local nationals who work on the base, government contractors are all eligible to be members. So it's just one giant community organization rather than just a spouses club. But they still have the thrift store and they do the scholarships and all the things that your standard spouses club would offer as well. Okay, well, that's good. All right, so let's switch gears. I want to know what the most rewarding thing about being in Garmish is since you've been there now. We have been here for about five months and the biggest thing for me is because we are so small, we're kind of forced into getting to know each other. So if you need anything, the community is really here for you. Yeah. That's cool. You know, I saw that a lot at um, Bombholder when I went and visited Bombholder. It's a geographically separated unit from the KMC. It's like 30, 35 minutes away, but it's very small. And again, very tight community. I went to like a bingo night, which I would never go to at Grafenbeer or Vilsa because nobody would go. But I went to a bingo night or something and it was like packed, you know, <laughs> like everyone's at the bar and there's the people are eating and they're playing. It's like a whole, the whole community comes together, which is nice, you know? Yeah. So I'm sure it's it's something similar to that in, in Garmish. Yes, we host one giant Thanksgiving. Oh, really? Old base attends. Wow, that's pretty cool. That's really cool. We probably should have mentioned this in the beginning, but you have two main bases there, right? Talk to me about, so what are the two main bases? So we have Sheridan Concern, which is home to the Edelweiss Hotel and Resort, the Marshall Center, which is a school. So service members can be here to attend the school or they could be staff working at the school. And then our gym, the chapel, and a privately owned cafe, I believe are the only things over on that base. Okay. The base where everyone lives is Artillery Caserne. It is home to seven stairwell apartment buildings and I believe six duplexes for um, senior officer families. We also have the school, the CDC, garrison buildings, RPX commissary, and a few other offices are over here on this building. So, or this concern. So this is where most of the day-to-day -day happenings for service members are. So what I was going to ask about that is, do you guys go to Edelweiss for any other resources? I mean, like, obviously you get the gym over there and you have the chapel there, so you would use those services, but 
do you guys just go to Edelweiss? Just you know, maybe you want to go to Pullman Cafe to have a breakfast instead of whatever you're used to on the other side. Like, is, do you, does that happen often? So you can go over. Um, my husband and myself have gone over a few times. They host like holiday events for labor day they did like a little party living here of course we can go over and attend those we have access to the few restaurants that they have over there haven't tried it but someone told me we can pay to use like the pool services and stuff like that over there they do have a little mini golf course um so there are a few things over there that we can tap into as well okay cool well that's all i really got uh for you today is unless you had any last minute things that you wanted to add or um, expectations for people moving over there. I don't believe so. I think that's about it. Okay. Well, look, I appreciate you taking the time to sit down with me and actually, you know, write notes down and, and uh, provide incoming families with this information. So uh, I appreciate that. And um, I can't wait to get this video out soon. Perfect. All right. Talk to you later, Caitlin. Take care. Thank you so much. All right. Bye.